Hey everyone, welcome back to Nerddom's Pull List. My name is Matt and today we got some interesting picks. And before we go any further, I have read every single issue that I have previously bought and they are now in my box behind me. So, except for one, which we'll cover the second issue of kind of didn't want to feel I didn't really want to read Christmas story as of yet but first if you like what I do here feel free to subscribe also hit that like button it really does help us out here on the channel feel free to share if you like my picks also feel free to comment and let me know what you're picking up this week as well so without further ado let's hop into it I have the bag okay so first up we have the second issue of Batman Santa Claus Batman Santa Claus Silent Night. We got the second issue. This is the second issue in the series. I think it's a four. And this is the one that I haven't read the first issue of yet. So we're going to get into it probably a little bit closer to the holiday. But I wanted to get all of them just to have them. So this one's, by the way, written by Parker, Bandini, Parasign, and Sinclair. So that is Batman Santa Claus silent night so i forgot to keep picking up the issue two of this series and the first one i had a glowing review of so this is a haunted girl issue two we got a haunted girl issue two which is old i do believe it's from last month but this week's release is haunted girl issue three Again, this one's by Ethan Sachs and his daughter, Naomi Sachs, and then Marco Lorenzana. Looks like he's doing the art. So far, I'm really liking the story. It's a, I've only read the first issue so far, so I do have the second issue right here to get into. But again, it's a psychological slash, what's that word? Psychological slash paranormal story. So is she really being haunted? Is it her mental illness? Hopefully we'll figure that out. And yeah, I'll keep you up to date on what I think of a haunted girl, but I had a glowing review of that first issue. So I'm gonna keep it going. I do believe it is four issues. It's either four or six issues. So having a good time with it. Very good, very interesting. Next up, maybe the big one of the week. We have Moon Knight, issue 30. The last days of the Moon Knight. Now, I believe this is the last, spoilers. This is the last issue for Mark Spector. And let me know in the comments if you think he's going to be coming back. I mean, it's comic books. He could just come back. Happy to have this final issue. And I'm definitely going to read through it. And then I do believe in two weeks or one week starts Vengeance of the Moon Knight. So we'll see what happens in that. But I figured this is a pretty important. This is a pretty important piece to have. So this is McKay Cappuccino. Oh, it's not Cappuccino. It's Cappuccio. Cappuccio? I don't know. And Rosenberg. So again, that is Moon Knight issue 30. The last days of the Moon Knight. And maybe I should uh, let me know if I should pick up some of the back issues of this book because my local shop is 50% off back issues this week. So maybe I should go get them. Next up, the second issue of this book is coming out next week and is by one of my favorite writers, mostly from his Batman run, but this is Scott Snyder's Canary. Scott Siders Canary, he's also uh, joined by artist Panosian. Been hearing pretty good things about this, and it's also one of the first Dark Horse comics that I'm actually picking up. So Canary issue number two comes out next week. This came out, I do believe, a couple weeks ago. So I picked this one up, and I'm really excited to hop into it. That is Scott Snyder and Panosian. I don't know if it's Western or Gangster. I think it is Western. So... Really, really excited to hop into that. I love westerns, I love horror, and then I love capes. So, a couple of more things about me. So that is Canary, issue number one. And then finally, not much, not much on this week. There wasn't a lot for me to really hop onto. Next week is going to be a heavy, heavy single issue week. But finally, and not certainly not least, we have book two of Batman City of Madness. Book two. So I had a glowing review of the first book. 
I had an amazing time with it. The art is spectacular. The the writing, the story is all interesting. Some type of Cthulhu, spoiler, Cthulhu story going on. And the variant cover for this one was amazing. I got some footage of it. The variant cover on this thing is superb. I might have to pick that one up too. But this is probably my pick of the week. Maybe I should start doing a pick of the week. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. But this is definitely my pick of the week. Christian Ward's Batman City of Madness. So I'm going to start setting up all this. Don't know if I'll be getting to these this weekend or tonight. Probably this weekend. But really happy to have all of these in my collection. And let me know in the comments down below what you're picking up this week. So I did get to read some of my backlog of single issues that I have been putting off recently. And I just want to catch you up with some of the stories that I've been reading. So I did get to read issues one of two of Blood Commandment. And I shouted him out on Twitter and on Instagram. Very, very well done story going on there. The art is fantastic. Really reminds me of what Christian Ward is doing. I know a lot of the other people have done it as well, but I mean, doing currently in the stuff that I'm getting, it's a single artist and writer. So it's really their creative vision, 100%. And I'm just having a great time reading that one. It's two issues into a four issue story. And I do believe next week or the week after is the third issue. So shout out for Blood Commandment. That may be my read of the week. If you can pick up those two titles, issues one and two. I read the Creep Show Christmas one last night. And it's fun. It's fine. You know, and nothing was really groundbreaking. They kind of seemed like the same story in the book just changed a little bit differently. So it was still a good fun pickup and I'm sure that I'll be checking it out maybe every year or so. You know, something just to have to hold on to. I did read issues one and two of Scarlet Witch, the new Marvel run. And I can say it's 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 probably not for me. So Scarlet Witch is running an emporium. It's like a, a spell store, but she has this magical door set up where people can come in and they have an issue and then she can go help them solve it. And the first issue talks about a woman whose town has been taken over by a dude who is mind controlling everybody. And she has this special stone that is stopping the mind control from happening to her, but it also happened to her wife who is mind controlled. So, kind of a simple story. There's a funny little bit about Quicksilver needing to do something. So he polishes this stone to help her protect, help protect her a little bit more. They said something about like it could take a lifetime, and it's for him it's gonna take like 10 minutes. So that was kind of funny. But otherwise, I don't think the the story is really for me. I don't think I'm gonna be continuing that one. So I think for Marvel, I may pick up Moon Knight, Daredevil, Daredevil Black Armor. I'm trying to think if there's any other titles. I read the Secret Wars uh, Battle World tie-in as well. And this book, it's a limited series, but it takes place in between certain issues in the actual, or certain panels in the actual Secret Wars back in the 80s comics. So again, I haven't read Secret Wars. I've, I haven't picked it up. So I do need to get that probably as a graphic novel, as a, as a trade. So that way I kind of know what we're talking about. But that one's fun. It's probably the only Spider-Man title that I have. And he already has the black suit that was given to him by the machine. And nobody really knows what it is. So it's kind of funny. There was a, a panel that has the black suit doing something. And then someone, a uh, human torch, says like, oh, did your suit do that? And Peter's like, what? And he's like, oh, never mind. So that was kind of funny. But other than that... On that one, I'm, I don't know if I should be picking that one up. Maybe I will because it is a special and it's limited. I really do like beginning and ending stories, you know? So I'll probably continue that one. The uh, the Battle World, Secret Wars Battle World. Let's see. Oh, we read Batman 89 Echoes. It was really cool to see what where these characters are. I know I'm missing a little bit of the Batman 89 story from the comics. And this is like the continuation of those comics. So I do need to catch up on that, but it's really cool to see, you know, Harley in this universe and a bunch of other characters that we never got to see in the Burton verse. So that one's kind of cool. I'll probably keep up on that one. Again, it's only a short series. I think it's like six issues. Oh, Edenwood. 
So Edenwood issue one and two is not what I thought it was going to be at all. It is a lot more interesting in regards to the lore that's happening and the characters that have been introduced. And the whole universe is just so wild. There's what? Demons and witches and vampires. Time disparities. So like time works differently for different places or something. I'm not fully understanding it. I may need to read it again. But really cool universe that they've made and mixture of a different styles and lores into their own universe and it's all happening inside america and there's like a french dude who is the main character's like mentor so really cool i'm gonna keep up on that one that one's really cool invasive invasive was another one i didn't expect so this one invasive is talking more about elective surgeries people who are kind of addicted to that type of surgery like they showed a lady who was getting her lips done like liposuction, that kind of thing. And there is then a group of creepy serial killer doctors, kind of. They do, they do, um, like actual surgeries to people. And it's like their, their way of killing them is through an, an actual surgery. And it's like an elective surgery. So I don't know if this story is talking about their people's obsession and addiction to elective surgeries or or what but it's really cool aesthetic i don't know i don't know why some person's in charge of these like doctor people but i may keep up on that one because of just how wacky and different that one is and the allegory about the elective surgeries i mean it's not really an allegory it's on the nose but yeah that might, might, i'm uh i'll probably keep up on that one. Oh, daredevil we actually caught up on all four issues of the next of the current daredevil run and i'm all caught up now so i don't know i didn't i didn't know that matt went to hell he came back we don't know how but he he didn't know who he was in the first issue of the book and he was a reverend so really cool to see matt murdoch as a priest as a preacher as a catholic you know Creature. Um, but he, they, they kind of solve the, the the mind wipe really quickly in the first issue. But the way that they draw this demon that is possessing Electra and um, what's his face? The reporter guy later. Really, really cool. And almost like a horror comic. So, I mean, he's dealing with demons and he's able to see the demon after all the experiences, I guess, in hell. Ben Yurik. So the other demon is controlling Ben Yurik, and he he hasn't been acting right for about two issues. Then you notice that he is, again, uh, being possessed by a demon. So now Matt Murdock is not only the Daredevil, but he's also an um, he can, he does exorcisms <laughs> on Elektra and Ben Yurik. So I like that part of him, and it talks a lot about his faith. You know, his faith in Catholicism, faith in Jesus, God everything like that and he is very still very stubborn and stuck in his faith and it's interesting to see him not be a hoe because <laughs> i know matt murdoch is a hoe um one part i didn't like though was after the uh there's a gang fight and matt is taking out bullseye from this from this place of uh, the gang fight and ben yurik who has been like in on this the whole time possessed by the demon he sees the demon and the person pulls up and they're like, oh, you we weren't supposed to do this, blah, blah, blah. And then he immediately goes, ah, oh, you're exercised. So it didn't seem very smart of the demon to come up to him like that. And for him to, I mean, it just didn't make, it just seemed like they wanted to get rid of that part pretty quickly versus him having to then find this Ben Yurik again and exercise that demon in a different way or in a different panel maybe a different issue so i didn't like how that was just like oh i'm bringing out bullseye Rah, you stopped my plan and then it's like ah you demon out of you oh where am i so that's all that i caught up on from the last week now let me know in the comments down below if you want me to continue doing these little short reviews at the end of the pull list but Overall, having still a great time. I'm running out of space in these boxes. I may need to get more boxes. I may need to get more boxes. I may need to get more boxes. I may need to get 
more boxes very soon. So, and again, if you like what I do here, feel free to subscribe, hit that like button, and feel free to share it with your friends, you know? Having a good time here. Until next time on the pull list, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.